Здравствуйте! Я, комиссар Бинко, представлям вам. I, комиссар Бинко, present you France vs. United Kingdom. Date of conflict, mid-2016. This war would be mostly fought in the air and on the seas. The English Channel is too wide for any meaningful ground army invasion from either side. Fastest to act would be the air forces. France has a few more combat airplanes and their fleet is more multi-row. They would have more available planes for both ground strike and air superiority missions. But the British Typhoon fighters are a bit better than the French Rafales and are clearly superior to old Mirage. Their tornado strike planes are also more capable than the French Mirage and Etendard strikers. UK has a slight edge in aerial early warning. While most of its AREX platforms are helicopters, numbers do matter as more orbits can be maintained. British have less capable land-based SAM systems. Today, UK relies solely on very short-ranged systems. French SAM network includes long-range SAMs. French planes wouldn't need to worry over SAM threat if flying over 5000 meters of altitude, while British planes could be attacked at any altitude. British naval ships may offer some long-range SAM help and they're more numerous and more modern than French naval anti-airships, but realistically no side will use those ships in the English Channel where they are exposed. Rather, they might protect the side approaches. Both sides have roughly similar number of various bases and airports, far too numerous to be neutralized by either side. France is larger and has more strategic depth with the location of its air bases. War would start with cruise missile strikes, some trying to temporarily neutralize air bases and create local numerical advantage. UK has a greater variety and number of cruise missiles. Result of the air war is inconclusive. The French might do a bit more damage, but to actually exploit the relative air superiority, one needs enough strike planes left with a useful sortie rate. Both sides can hide their forces as they please, since there is no ground force threat. Basically, it would be a war against the infrastructure, which is again too numerous for any potential leftover air force. On paper, French Navy seems stronger, having a proper aircraft carrier, something that current Royal Navy lacks. The carrier on its own is a huge boost to French Navy, but it has to be on station, which is hard when you are home ported behind Gibraltar choke point. French have a few more ships, but British ships are on average a bit larger and more modern. UK has a slightly larger nuclear submarine fleet, though subs are both larger and more modern. French have many maritime patrol and anti-submarine aircraft. They could pose a problem for British submarine fleet, probably devoid of proper air cover over Gibraltar and even of the western French coast. British have no such planes. Navies could support a possible amphibious assault and aid the air defenses, but it is unlikely any side would try to do a large-scale amphibious invasion it would be a suicide mission. French like dedicated aerial reconnaissance, as their UAV fleet is made of mostly small and old aircraft. British have a fairly large UAV fleet, as well as battlefield surveillance planes with potent radars to monitor troop movements from afar. The French have none. Regular French army is a bit larger, but Britain has a few times more reservists. France has more paramilitary troops though. Both sides have similar number of quality tanks in active use, with French a bit more in storage. French main infantry vehicles are fairly light, most of them not very advanced and all are wheeled. British infantry vehicles are no more advanced, but they are better protected. Only French checked combat vehicles are their tanks and multiple launch rocket systems. British vehicle fleet is almost all track based. That may help gain a tactical edge, but it may also mean greater logistical effort needed to maintain such vehicles. The French have half the number of artillery pieces the British do. Half the British guns are of smaller caliber, but that can also be good for quick relocation. Most of French guns can be flown around in tactical transport planes, but they do need an airstrip to land. The British would also enjoy a small edge in helicopter-based fire support. Their helicopter fleet is a bit larger and more potent. The French, however, have slightly more scout helicopters greatest British advantage is held by far more potent air recon and surveillance fleet. The greatest French asset would be their superior air defenses. Both sides ground armies would not be a major factor and would not see much fighting. Final verdict matchup of two equals. France may do slightly more airstrike damage in real world 
war, but it is impossible to pick either side as even a marginal winner. It's a draw, comrades! Though the nuclear skirmish option may actually have a winner, sort of.